Good morning and welcome to Westside Baptist Church. This is Sunday School on September 1st, 2024. And we are in a new series called Thrive, Living on Purpose. And the first session is called Purpose. It is called Purpose Question. Apart from God, life is meaningless. The world claims a lot of things will give us security, happiness, and a sense of well-being. But when we chase these things, we discover that they fail to deliver. When God is in the picture, we see life from a very different and also better perspective. The scripture that we're looking at comes from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 1 through 14. It is a book that's part of what is called Bible's wisdom. That includes Job, Proverbs, and this book. And it is a look back at what is really important in our lives. People don't always find the answers to the big why in all of the questions that we have, but the Bible provides a sure answer for all of the questions. Ecclesiastes 1 verses 1 through 7 says this, The word of the preacher, the son of David, king in in Jerusalem, vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh but the earth abideth forever. The sun also arises, and the sun goes down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full unto the place from whence the rivers came. Thither they return again. So, this man who is the teacher that is Solomon and he saw everything in life after much study and searching and trying to prove what was important he found that Everything in life was meaningless apart from God. 
He says, here in the world we work, but in the end, we can't take anything with us. The Bible says that we brought nothing into the world, and it is certain that we will carry nothing out. So why do we per, uh, pursue all of these worldly things? So as Christians, we can still struggle with the seeming fruitility of our day-to-day -day lives. The earth keeps going through all of its repetitions, all of the natural cycles that we have in nature and everywhere else. So, again, who is the preacher? That is King Solomon. He was the son of David. And he was the only descendant of David who actually reigned over all of Israel after his, his death. It was split into the northern and the southern kingdom. Now, Solomon said that all of our work, all of our life is, is but a breath. It's a vapor. And we are transitory in our nature. And he says, what does it profit us if we gain the whole world, if we have fame, fortune, and everything that we need, and we don't uh, have any major problems? But the excellent life is is the life that is served for God. And so we see the world that we labor. We all have had jobs so that we could support ourselves. And sometimes there was a lot of drudgery. And he was saying all of this work under the sun, which is saying all of the worldly things that we have done. Uh, but under the sun refers to what it looks like from just an earthly perspective. Uh, without God, without an afterlife, and a final judgment. <clears throat> Solomon's focus shift to an understanding that a meaningful life is one in which God has a relationship with us when we obey him and live the way that he wants us to. Now we see things happen in a cycle. There's a generation, it will pass away here comes the next generation, and this 
has gone on since the beginning of time. We see the sun as it comes up every day and it sets every evening and it comes back the next day. We see these cycles and we see the same cycles in the weather. We see the spring and the summer and the fall and the winter. And we need the crops. That's where our food comes from. And all of our meats come from. And so we see these things over and over again. And we have to eat over and over again. We have to have to drink water over and over again. It's a continual thing. He goes on to say in chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, saying that all things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. It hath already of old time, which was before us. So this meaningless life made the teacher weary and unsatisfied. We work every day. We have, have things that have to be done. But he was talking about working until you were tired or exhausted. So this summarizes the meaninglessness of both human life and the world itself. All is vain repetition. And he was saying that he didn't have the words with all of his research and all of his study to really say exactly what it was like. They say that Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. He was the wisest human, but of course Jesus was God. And he was 100% wise. And Solomon was saying here that we see things and we hear things and we're not satisfied. Our eyes still want to see more. Our ears still want to hear more. And we're never satisfied. And even when we're filled to the point of overflowing, it still is not satisfying. Now, he said that there's no new thing under the sun, but he was not stating 
that the technology could not advance and improve how we live, but new inventions cannot break the cycle of sin and suffering and death. We see that so far, except for a few men of God, everybody dies. Everybody suffers in some way. So he was saying there is nothing new under the sun. Not only is life apart from God unsatisfactory, it lacks true purpose. So, when we think about things, the words that we speak have meaning and it refers to, to God's commands, to his promises, and like the words that we have in the Ten Commandments. Solomon used this term in the verse to refer back to the forces of nature. It was the cycles. It was the never ending movement of the sun, the wind and the water of seemingly the absolute fertility of life. It was full of labor. We worked until we were tired. And there is in the world the foolish pursuit of, of wealth that wears us out. While on their own, people may grow weary, but the Lord never grows weary, and he renews the strength of those of us who trust him. He couldn't find the words to really explain it. First, it was the wearisome pursuit of life under the sun left Solomon wanting more of an explanation. And secondly, he was not able to speak to find the words to actually explain it. Again, he talked about the eyes seeing and wanting to see more and the ears wanting to hear more, never being satisfied. So the examination of human life and, and nature left Solomon unfulfilled. And seeing and hearing does not automatically make us understand what is going on. And so he was saying that nothing is new and the same things that have happened in the past, we've seen them happen over and over again. We see the cycles. And 
we see that our people are born, they live and they die, the next generation comes about. He was saying that overall nothing changes. He was saying that nothing can break the cycle of sin, suffering, and death. And so we see the same things over again. People pursue fame, power, wealth, happiness. Nothing changes. And all of one's major accomplishments and possessions are left behind when we die. And there are only two things that last forever. That is the souls of men and women and God's word. And so it is very important that we have a right relationship with God. He goes on to say there in chapter 1, verses 11 through 14, there is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in in Jerusalem. And I gave my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under the sun. This sore a travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of the spirit. So he looked for the purpose of our lives. And so here was a man driven by exceptional wisdom and armed with resources and the means that come with being the king. He made it his mission to live life to the fullest. Yet in all he did, and he did a lot, purpose and satisfaction eluded him. He sought purpose in pleasure and living the good life. He sought purpose through the pursuit of knowledge. He sought purpose in achievement and in making something of himself. He sought purpose in his possessions and what he owned. He sought purpose in making a name for himself. He sought purpose in making the world a better place. He sought purpose in the pursuit of of justice. So Solomon did a lot of research 
a lot of study and and his conclusion was that we should serve God, obey God, and live the way that he wanted us to. <clears throat> so he was just saying that all of these cycles repeat themselves just like we see the rivers run into the ocean yet the ocean does not overflow so what happens to all that water it evaporates it goes up in the clouds and it comes back to us by rain and we see this cycle over and over again and we see that same cycle throughout history in human lives and he says that he was the king and he had, of course, he had great wisdom. That's what he asked God for. But he had education, power, and wealth. And he gave his whole heart uh, to the pursuit to find out what the purpose was. And so we see here in the first chapter all of the issues that he had. And so he went through all of the 12 chapters and he talked about all all his vanity and vexation of the spirit and it, it doesn't make any difference whether you have wisdom and you have knowledge you have wealth you have many possessions whatever your pleasure your work and your politics these pursuits easily can and do become idols unto themselves and we see that they all fail to satisfy so only one who has a saving relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, will find the true meaning of life. So, what is our purpose? If we read all of this book and the last few verses there in uh, chapter 12 say that the only meaningful thing is our relationship with God being saved and sharing and working with others so that they can be saved. So 
we need to search our heart and take some quiet time away from the rush of life and ask the Holy Spirit to search our heart with this question, what am I looking to apart from God for meaning in my life? We are surrounded every day by people with no purpose and they need to be pointed uh, to our Lord and Savior the only one that that gives us the proper purpose for our lives So let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this book, Lord. And we thank you that you spoke through Solomon. And we thank you for all of the research and the study that he did. And all of it came from the work of the Holy Spirit to prove that the only real purpose is is what we leave behind and what we take with us when we leave this world. That only the things that we have done for you will matter. That's our purpose. Lord, we know that we should share the word and we know that we should help our friends and our families to share the word with them. Lord, we thank you uh, for this church that we can come Sunday morning, Sunday evening and also Wednesday that we can be fed that we can learn your word that we can share your word and so we ask Lord that we should make your purpose a priority uh, for our lives. And I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.